If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Hello and welcome once again to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer. And as ever, I'm so pleased to be back with you. And I am, as you listen to this, if you're listening on the day it is published, I am, I have got back from the Vacation Rental Success Summit. And next week, I will be talking to you all about it and giving you all my learning points and nuggets of information and a few anecdotes of people I met. So that's upcoming. But for now, today I have as my guest, Justin Ford from onthewaterinmaine.com. Justin is a property manager. He is also a vacation rental safety expert. And I really wanted to talk to Justin because he, you know, he, he knows this business really, really well. And he also understands all the safety aspects around it. And as we come into a brand new season, safety and security of our guests is at the top of my mind. We got into um, a slip and fall issue last year. And and that is still going on, you know, I mean, our insurance company has taken care of it. And we still know it's out there and we still occasionally get the questions about it. When you get sued um, or a claim is made against you, even when you have the best insurance ever, it's still stressful. It's still bothersome. You still have this at the back of your mind that, you know, was there something that we didn't do? Was there something that we could have done better? Was there something that we should have let the, the guests know? And was there something that we need to tell all our owners to prevent anything like this from happening to them? When I'm going out to cottages at the moment to look at them to take take on for our rental portfolio, I am always looking at safety issues, whether it be decks or docks or staircases or hot tubs or boats or absolutely anything where there is the potential for a guest to have any sort of um, mishap or accident. And of course, we've all heard of some relatively recent things, things that have happened in properties that have been disastrous. And I know that Justin is going to talk about a couple of these today and really um, explain what, how important it is to take the safety of your vacation rental really, really seriously and think beyond smoke detectors and CO uh, monitors and fire extinguishers. There's more, many more things that have to be taken into account than that. What I don't want is for people to think, oh, safety, it's boring. It's not like marketing, which is so exciting and sexy. Um, You've really got to think about safety as the core of your business. Because if you're not operating from a safe and secure foundation in your properties, then you're opening yourself up for all sorts of of issues uh, at a later date. So without further ado... Let's let Justin talk about this. So let's move on over to the interview. Well, I'm delighted to have with me today Justin Ford, who is a founder of OnTheWaterInMaine.com, which is one of the largest, what, the largest property management company in the in the East. Justin, in the northeast, in exactly. in the northeast. In, uh, in New England. That's fantastic. And you're also president at a a Vacation Rental Consultants, and you're going to tell us what you actually do consulting for. So thank you for joining me. And um, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into this business. Yeah, no problem. Um, I am a veteran of the U.S. Coast Guard. I got involved with uh, boating safety uh, inspections back in the 1990s. And interestingly, got into the vacation rental business through boat rentals. Um, I don't know too many people out there that went that direction. Normally, they start out in real estate, move to rentals. Um, but with our the company that I used to own up in Maine, we would uh, rent boats out, 
and uh, figured we needed houses to rent them to. Um, <laughs> so uh, I was also a um, volunteer firefighter, and uh, all of that led into um, a lot of work more recently in the uh, PMS or the vacation rental software side of the industry. So I've got a very diversified career so far of over 20 years in the vacation rental industry. Um, but my unique niche has been on safety, and I think it's only be, been because there's been a, a big hole there, and nobody else jumped in to tackle it. I saw the opportunity to do so, and uh, I've been very focused on vacation rental safety for probably the past uh, four or five years now. That That is great to hear, as a, as a, and as a property manager myself, I understand why I think there is this this gap because people don't seem to to think it's it's hugely important you know you go and look at a house and and do a cursory wander around and think well that looks okay I'm you know personally for that for those of my listeners you know exactly how I feel about things like emergency planning because I bang on about it all the time um, so it's an absolute delight to talk to you um, Justin and and get your expertise because as you say there aren't i don't think i've i've heard i've come across anybody else who who specializes in this area no and unfortunately usually people don't develop an interest in something strongly until something bad happens to them and uh that was the case that happened with me it took uh, an incident in one of our vacation rentals for the, the company i used to own um for someone getting injured for me to realize that holy smokes i never would have thought to check for the safety on this and how would I, I have known to do this? And um, after an experience I had like that, I decided that I needed to dig into this deeper and, and make sure other people didn't run through what I went through, not only as the property manager, but also looking out for the best interest of the guests and people who rent the homes. So, so what, was the, what was the incident or accident that happened that, uh, that got you started? Yeah, you know, it was pretty crazy, um, but... If you're familiar with the metal hammock stands, um, I believe L.L. Bean is, is one of the manufacturers of these hammock stands. They've been around for years, and you can just roll it out on your lawn or out on the beach. Mm -hmm. And there's an S-hook that connects the hammock into the stand. And unfortunately, uh, because it had weathered for a number of years outside and nobody had really put a lot of stress on it, the uh, metal had fatigued where the S-hook connected. And a, um, a, let's just say a healthy woman mm -hmm. um, uh, hopped into it with a lot of force and the epoch suddenly became a projectile as it released through the weakened metal and um, it hit her in the skull and fractured from her skull. The first question that the homeowner asked me was, why hadn't anybody checked that hammock out? That made me to think about, well, whose job was it to check out the hammock? Whose job was it to get in there and, and bounce on that thing and make sure it was safe? And uh, as soon as I started looking at that, I realized, oh my gosh, whose job is it to check all of these things and make sure that everything's safe when shows up, someone shows up at a property? I'll share a story of ours. We, we had a lady uh, last, last summer who walked down to the end of a dock and her leg just went straight through a rotten dock board. She wasn't badly injured. She didn't go to hospital, but she was, she was badly scraped, and it could have been a really, really nasty accident. And and you know, it could have been a child. We had actually been to that property. Uh, we we do inspections every year. At that time, we did not have checklists. We didn't have you know safety checklists to say this is what you should do. It really was, as I was just saying, that cursory. Yeah, this looks okay and maybe walk down to the dock and admire the water and walk back. Um, but now we know better. So let, let, let's talk about that. I mean, who's, whose responsibility is this? You know, ultimately, I always like to say the responsibility of the safety of the home falls on the last person that is there before the guest is there. Um, and you can dig deeper into that and say, well, it's the homeowner certainly owns the home and needs to make sure that they set up everything, but I can't emphasize enough that that very last person that leaves the home is is the one who, whether it is the, the property owner or the property manager, they're the one who's had that opportunity to, 
to look around and notice the nail popping up out of the deck. Um, notice that someone's popped the battery out of the smoke detector in the kitchen because some, the last guest burned toast and did that. Or notice that the uh, exterior lights are out at the house, and uh, when the guest arrives, if they arrive after dark, how are they going to see their way in? So I, I can't emphasize enough it's that last person um, who's at the house before the renter arrives. That's an interesting one because, you know, as, as property managers, we, we, we can't go to every single property um, on every single changeover. So. Exactly. So, so who who is it? Is is the cleaner? I mean, do they have? Do, are you are you s- suggesting they they have checklists and and follow these things through to a, a, a very set standard on every visit? That's a great point, and and that's important. Everybody who works at your your property management company has to be aware of the safety factor. It can't be just the maintenance guy. But the maintenance guy has to know that while he's being sent to the property because the dishwasher's making a funny noise, he should be taking advantage of while he's there looking around and seeing if there's anything else that looks out of place. The cleaner, when they're at the property, um, that's a very important role for them. They should be hitting the test button on the smoke detector real quick with the end of the broom handle or the end of the vacuum cleaner when they walk into a room to see that it still beeps. Um, and they should be noticing, you know, that there's a piece of trim, you know, between the carpet and the kitchen that's starting to pop up, and boy, that's a trip hazard, and we need to get that fixed. And so it really needs to be everybody who's part of the team that's taking part in the safety, and everyone needs to be aware of the same type of things that are there. I'm just going to backtrack a little bit to, um, you know, just to to some... um some of the recent incidents that there have been, because I, I just want to, to go back to those and say, well, is there something that something, somebody could have done to, uh, to, to avoid that happening? I mean, we all know of the, of the family who, who died, the carbon monoxide poisoning, I believe. Yes, uh, there was a recent incident in Mexico. Uh, Mexico obviously doesn't have some of the same regulations that we have here in the United States, but uh, that was a very preventable incident. And, you know, one of the things that was highlighted in that incident was the responsibility also for the guest. And I know we'll talk about that in a little bit, but the first incident that really brought safety to attention in the vacation rental industry in the U S happened in Colorado in 2008. And again, it was a family dying from carbon monoxide in a vacation rental home. So, it's quite disheartening to see that 10 years later, we still have people dying in homes that are here in North America um, from carbon monoxide. And a lot of the houses that are out there have, have things in them that produce CO, whether it's a hot water heater, a, um, uh, you know, in the case of the Colorado incident, it was actually furnaces that uh, heated the driveway so they don't have to plow with snow. And, that's not the only accident that's happened. Um, my records show that more than 10 people died in vacation rentals last year. And it's everything from uh, in Florida, there was a couple of incidents where young children drowned in pools um, because pool safety wasn't put forth um, to uh, people who died in a home up in New England that burned down because there were matches still in the house and the kids were playing with matches that were left behind by a previous runner. Um, to incidents that involved uh, chemicals um, from pesticide treatments at some of the vacation rentals down in uh, the Virgin Islands. And that's scary stuff because there's a couple of things that you've just mentioned there that, that you know, just, uh, you know, some, somebody leaving some matches, you would not think of, of that. And I'm thinking back, in fact, to my own rental property, and I, th- I think there is, a, there is a draw there and there's some matches in that draw. My belief is is that there should not be anything that produces a flame in a vacation rental. And if you want to have candles in your home, get the candles that do not don't work with fire. That do the flicker by turning on the switch. They've done a great job uh, today producing candles now that look like a candle. But um, there should you don't know who's coming into your home, and they may be coming from an apartment in New York City where the children have never been exposed to fire before. And now all of a sudden they're in your home and there's candles everywhere and look, there's matches and wow, what do these do? Yeah, we have a number of properties with wood stoves. Wood stoves uh, can, 
can be fine as long as there's good instruction and mm-hmm. there's a lot of safety measures put in place. Um, and you want to make sure that the guest is put in a position where they're even asking themselves, do I know how to make a fire? Yeah. Make a fire. And if you're going to provide them with a device to light the fire, you know, it's, it's the safety uh, flame and it's put up in a high location so that the first person coming into the house isn't a kid finding that you know, ignite ignition device, the safety switches on it, but it's an adult who's going to have to reach up and get a hold of it. I mean, normally we think of vacation rental safety, and and I know when I've spoken to owners when I say talk to them about safety, and they're thinking of smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, CO monitors, and and that's it. What are other? What are some other safety items that are, that are often overlooked? Well, you know, it's interesting to focus on the idea of what is the what are people hurt by the most. And um, if you just look out there at the AARP or some of these um, these websites that focus on challenges for mobility for elderly people, of which many elderly people stay in vacation rentals, you'll find that falls are one of the number one incidents that that affect people, whether it's in a bathtub or walking into the house. So you want to consider, let's start at the very beginning or the outside of the house. Are there trip hazards? Is the walkway leading into the house uneven? And there have been a lot of incidents where people have fallen before they've even had a chance to get into the vacation rental. Or as I I alluded to before, the lighting isn't uh, set up well. Um, One of the most common emergency room accidents that uh, they see from home injuries is related to knives and people getting cut with a dull knife. So are you providing sharp knives in your vacation rental, um, replacing them or or at least giving some sort of an effort to making sure that something as simple as, uh, you know, cutting bread and cheese in the house once you've gotten in there and relaxed and you're able to use a knife that's not going to be so dull that you're going to cut yourself using it. Um, There's a lot of there's a very long list of many different things that need to be focused on and things that can be put into place to protect the guests to make sure that they're having a good stay. I know that, uh, that on your Facebook, Facebook page and, and in, um, I think it was in, in an article, it was in the article that you wrote for VRM Intel, um, and I'll be putting a link to that in the show notes so people can have a look at that article. But there was a photograph there that you, you commented on about a, and it was, on, it was about an, an Airbnb listing, um, a boy and, and a father sitting underneath a stone staircase that had no banister, no method of, um, of stopping people falling off the side of it. Um, how, so, so, so this is a different thing to approach. These, the, these are major construction items. And I, I know uh, that we, we handle this all the time when we go to properties and while I'll go and see a deck that may have been up to building code 30 years ago, but certainly is not now. You know, that the, the, the deck slopes outwards. Um, there's a good three feet between, <laughs> between the railings. Right. Um, so so the, these, are, these are real structural things that is, is not just a matter of, of changing out a smoke detector or, um, or banging a nail in. How, how do, how do you um, suggest property managers deal with, um, with issues like this when they're discussing it with their owners? You highlighted it exactly. One of the most important things is that your house needs to meet current building codes, national standard of building codes. There's no excuse for not renting out your house today without meeting current national building codes. And the best way to go about making sure that your house meets building codes is to bring in a property inspector. And typically, People only bring a property inspector in when they're getting ready to buy a house. They want to have an evaluation to know what things need to be fixed in the home um, before they purchase it. But that same type of evaluation needs to be done really by that same type of expert who can go through the house and say, hey, this railing isn't up to building code. This deck isn't structurally sound. Um, These electrical outlets in the house aren't properly grounded. And so one of the first things that everybody should do before they rent their house out and 
I don't care if your great grandmother never fell down the stairs or fell through the railings, and neither did your grandmother or your mom. If you've decided to rent out that cottage that's been in your family for a hundred years, fifty years, whatever it is, you need to do a building inspection and have somebody come in with the mindset that they're looking to ensure that the house is meeting current building code and what are the opportunities if it's not to get it there. Yes, uh, ab- absolutely, and uh, I, I full on agree agree with that. As far as the approach, I mean, let, let's let's take the approach that that you have with with your owners in in your property management company. Um, sure. Do you do you, do you do an initial inspection and then issue a report or something that says you know we we will not accept this pro this property into our program unless you do A B and C or do you do something else? No, absolutely, and that's when I'm going to look at a house. Um, obviously, if you're looking to list a new property with your your property management company, um, you're looking at the idea, is, is this going to be a profitable house? Is this in the right neighborhood? Do they have the right decor? But when you first go to that house, you also need to have the mindset walking through, looking up and seeing, is that deck sound enough? This, this individual wants to host, um, it's a five-bedroom home, they can sleep uh, 10 people here. Can that deck hold 10 people? And go lean on that railing or have some sort of knowledge to know that the railing height either isn't high enough or the spacing isn't correct. And to get that basic stuff out of, out of the way and reference that to the homeowner that, hey, this is a great house. I want to list it with you. But by the way, that railing doesn't look like it's the code. So let's, let's get somebody to check that out. And usually a homeowner wants to meet what that is. Sometimes I've seen resistance where they say, well, the insurance company was just here. They just inspected it, and they said it was fine. That's great, but you got to remember that that person coming from the insurance company isn't coming to inspect the home necessarily for rental. They're coming to inspect it and, and see what their open liability is, which is usually is it going to flood or is there a tree going to fall on it, and it looks like that's not going to happen, um, and they move on. So they're not you're not going to be able to fall back on that if an accident happens at the house. And having a proper building inspector come in is the right way to go um, with all of that type of stuff. So apart from getting an inspector to come in to, um, to, to check out the various elements that might be related to, to building code, what, what else should someone looking to rent their home do to prepare it for rentals when it comes to safety? Um, that's that's fabulous that you're asking that question. They need to think about all the different aspects and do some research. Um, You mentioned before providing a link to the um, article that I've written, but I also do have uh, a safety checklist that I have have provided that I'll make sure you can share that link with as well and go down through the safety checklist. Um, But one of the things that's, that's key is getting the guest involved with the safety of their stay because ultimately they need to be aware of it. And we all certainly uh, want people to stay in a vacation rental over a hotel. Um, that's just that's our industry. That's what we want to do. But the reality is, when you go stay in a hotel, they're re- required by law in most cases to present safety. And if you've ever stayed in a hotel room, you know there's a map in there that tells you where the exit is, and you know that they have a centralized fire alarm system, and they have different components that they're required to do. And they get the guest involved with that. And so I would encourage homeowners and property management companies to do the same thing, to get the guest involved. Something as simple as just putting a post-it note on the mirror in the bathroom and reminding the guest, because every guest is going to stand in front of that mirror at some point, whether it's to brush their teeth before they go to bed or or comb their hair in the morning. But just use that, that one space, which is, I believe, the ultimate spot to communicate with a guest to say, hey, have you checked around the house yet to make sure that you're comfortable and you know where your exits are? Um, are you familiar with where the smoke detectors are? And uh, have you talked to your safe, your your house, your guests that are staying with you um, about safety here, staying in the home? And if you're on a waterfront home, you know, highlight. Have you talked to the kids about being careful down at the dock? And if you're on a ski condo on the fourth floor, you know, if you highlighted to them and made sure that the, the door going out to the deck is locked so nobody falls over off the deck. Um, so 
probably one of the biggest tips that I would want to leave today in this, in all of this, um, is communicate with your guests through that type of method and get them involved with safety as well. Yeah, that, that's an interesting point because we, we know that the, one of the most common uh, com- complaints that property managers, owners, whoever, uh, hosts have is that guests don't read stuff. And right. you can prepare as much as you can in the way of your wonderful welcome guide, but they're, they're just not going to read it. So I, I do like the idea of, of placing something in a spot where you know people are going to look and a mirror is great and I hadn't thought about that because my well, what we do in our properties is is put a um, put a, a, a single sheet on the inside of the most used covered door and that uh, it's what we call the quick start guide so it, it has you know what to do in the case of an emergency and um, because you know people are going to open that open that cupboard, but I love the idea of of a mirror. I just want to tell you, uh, you know, a, a, an experience that that I had a few years ago going to a vacation rental in the Bahamas, and we'd arrived sort of late in the in the afternoon, early evening. So that by the time we got to the property, it was beginning to go dark, and we'd just done sh- we'd just arrived, we'd just done the shopping, we got into the property. Um, unloaded everything and of course what's the first thing you do you have a drink or two or three and then everybody goes to bed thinking we're going to get up in the morning and then we'll look at all the stuff relating to the property well there was a storm that night and the power went out so we've got the storm we've got kids we've got people wandering around the house in the complete darkness because there is no power nobody knows what to do um, there is no light, and and it was a very it was a little bit of a scary situation um, because you know one of the my, one of my grandkids tripped on the stairs, fell down the stairs um, because it was dark. Um, how would you, if 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 you were advising that homeowner, what would you have said that they should have done? Oh, and that's you know for me that's been, that's an easy one. They sell great flashlights now that plug into a wall outlet that have a switch on them that will come on when the power goes out. And they're fantastic. They're seven or eight bucks. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon.com as well. I'll see if I can find a link to uh, for you to share with your listeners. Um, but the, those are the best best safety feature out there when it comes to that, and um, very easy to to address. Yeah, that 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 was um, <laughs> that was not the good start to to a vacation because it you know it was it was pitch black and uh, you know we we did talk about it and say well why weren't there any any night lights any anything because apparently the the power goes out a lot in in some of these locations so what what we actually have in in our homes is uh, we we call it the the the, the power outage kit and and we do advise our guests before they go that the power goes out occasionally in our in our particular part of the world with you know there's microbursts and you can often lose power and we we tell them before they even go that this happens and that there will be an emergency outage kit and that's the first thing they should look for when they get there um and that's alongside having um you know having flashlights as you've mentioned well, you know, that brings up a very good point, and this is uh, something that whenever I present on safety, it's usually the introduction that I make, and your listeners should consider and take into account, when someone shows up, and usually I tell people to, to close your eyes and imagine this, you're, you're in a car, you've just driven eight hours with your kids who are screaming that their iPad battery's dying, and mommy this and mommy that and your husband's grumpy because the traffic's been horrible and by the time you show up to that vacation rental home it's after dark you're exhausted you go into this house and you put everybody to bed what happens at one in the morning when suddenly that emergency happens whether or not it's the power that's out or there's a fire in the house all these types of things and the homeowner or the property manager needs to take on their shoulder the fact that the renter has put complete trust in them, 100%, as soon as they closed their eyes and went to bed, complete trust that everybody will be notified if there's a fire or a carbon monoxide incident, or that if they wake
break up and there's a power outage or a problem, that they're going to have the tools readily available to them and easily accessible should they need to address an emergency. And I can't encourage people enough to think about that as they set up their home for vacation rental, um, that they they prepared their guests for the inevitable thing that could potentially happen. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me about smoke detectors, uh, Justin, because uh, we had um, a year or so ago a, a complaint from a guest who's, who said that they had checked the smoke detectors when they got to the property and they were over 10 years old. I was I, at that time, I and I and I I'm very educated on it now. <laughs> but um, I I didn't know that smoke detectors had a a lifespan. Smoke detectors fail and have a, a very big failure rate. It's estimated that thirty percent of smoke detectors over the age of ten are no longer effective. And one of the examples that I often show people. And you'll see this all the time, and I hope every listener in here now, every time they walk into a room and they look up at a smoke detector, thinks of this of this moment and what I'm sharing. If the smoke, they don't sell off white smoke detectors. If you go to to a Home Depot or your local hardware store and look at a smoke detector, they're bright white, and they were bright white back in the 1970s when they first were invented, and they were bright white in the 80s and in the 90s. And if you're walking into a room and that smoke detector is now almost yellow or <laughs> off white, the same deterioration that's happened that's changed the color of the exterior of that detector has also occurred on the inside with the sensors that are used to detect the smoke, whether it's an ionization type detector um, or the more common smoke detectors. And so people need to change those out. Ten years, you know, is, is the limit. And uh, use the coloration of a smoke detector as an indication that it's time to change it if uh, you're not checking the dates themselves. Uh huh. The the other thing um, is is fire extinguishers because I think people start they 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 set up their their rental and they they go out and they buy their fire extinguishers and they put them on the walls. Or in the case of one lady um, we encountered, she put hers in the box in a cupboard because she thought it was unsightly. Um, oh. <laughs> that, that happens all the time and um you know that's great but the moment you put your house for up for rent it is now a commercial it's a business it's commercial and unfortunately there's some aspects of doing business commercially that aren't always aesthetically pleasing and um i think you'll find a lot of business owners wish that there were you know they didn't have to have an exit sign over what's obviously the exit but when it comes to the need for a smoke detector, you need to think about the placement of it, not because it, it uh, looks good or doesn't look good. You need to think about, all right, if there's a fire in the kitchen, um, well, where is the most common place for a fire going to be in the home? Boy, I'd like to have one with me in the bedroom when I run out the bedroom door um, and head to the kitchen to put it out. The last place you want to have a fire extinguisher is underneath the kitchen sink, which is where most people shove them. Um, normally that's near the stove or the dishwasher or the appliance that's probably on fire and you, you're not going to be able to get to it. While we're on fire too, I want to make sure we touch on grills. Um, gas grills. Every vacation rental that I know of has a barbecue and that's part of what people want to do when they're going on vacation. And I'm very frustrated that I continually see gas grills up on decks and very close to the home. And again, it's usually done for aesthetic purposes. People figure, well, um, the grill looks good, it's close to the kitchen, or I, I want it kind of out of the way. And homeowners need to understand that not only should a grill be at least three feet away from a house, um, you gotta get them off the decks and out away from the house. And it's it's hard, It's I get it. It's not convenient when it's raining out, you wanna be able to quickly get outside onto the deck and, and grill. Um, but there are a, a number of fires that have occurred in homes and in vacation rentals from gas grills. It, it just takes a minute stepping away for a flame out, and um, suddenly you've got yourself a big fire on your hand. Well, that's an interesting point. It wasn't one I thought of, but, you know, just, just like you. You know, we, we have a couple of hundred properties, and they all have gas grills, and the majority of them are sitting on the decks. You, they should never, if you're going to do it, and, and I realize you're not going to convince everybody to take it off the deck, but if, make sure it's not under an overhang. Mm -hmm. um, 
as a firefighter, I was called to one of my own vacation rentals, which is an alarming statistic when you hear that come over the page tone for, for responding to hear that you're going to a fire at one of your own rentals. It was a gas grill, and it was the last guest had not properly connected the uh, propane tank back to the gas hose. And when they lit the grill, it blew out mm-hmm. underneath the grill and, and caught on the, the siding on fire near the house. Uh, we fortunately got there quick enough and put it out. Um, but something as simple as that and not having someone properly connect the gas hose set up the next guest for what was a potential disaster in the making. So, yeah, just coming back onto fire extinguishers, how often, I was saying, you know, people will put them in when they, when they start their rentals, and, and probably it's the last thing they ever think about is, is doing anything with that fire extinguisher. Like smoke detectors, do they have a, a, a lifespan? Yeah, and you want to look at the inspection on them. Every smoke detector is different. It's not a matter of looking to see that the arrow's in green. Um, I've seen 50-year-old smoke detectors where the arrow's still in the green, and then you pull the trigger and it doesn't work. Um, so you definitely want to get those inspected at least every five years. Mm-hmm. Um, look at the date that's on them um, and make sure you dig in. They're, I, I'm anxious to make sure that all your listeners definitely go down the list because uh, mm. whether it's the fire extinguisher. Um, one of my favorite things that's overlooked that's a common source of fire at home and certainly where you're going to need that fire extinguisher is extension cords. And... People love to get lots of portable fans, portable air conditioners, um, and of course in today's world where everyone needs to plug in a charger, they, they take these extension cords and they'll coil them up underneath the bed so that the guest, because the way the bedroom layout is, it only had one outlet, so let's run extension cords around so they can have a lamp over here and plug in their cell phone chargers. Anytime you have a... Um, extension cord in a situation where it's wrapped or coiled it is now a heater and it will produce heat and some of them will produce a little bit of heat but you don't know if that guest is bringing in a guitar amplifier or um, their own heating device and when they plug into that um, you've created fire danger so I would encourage people to make sure that they're very safety conscious when it comes to uh, extension cords Um, and that will prevent obviously discharging Fire extinguishers mm-hmm. to the fire department. Uh, well, just um, just just moving on from that. What about um, Christmas time, the festive season, when and, and I know that owners who are renting out in the festive season they want to show off their properties to the 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 best. So they've got exterior lights, they've got interior fairy lights, they've got trees with lights. What do you advise them to do? Because, you know, I, I know that if, if I'm leaving my own home for a shopping trip, then every single spend 10 minutes going around and turning off all the lights because I don't want to leave anything on while I'm out of the home. But vacation right. rental guests aren't as, um, aren't as safety savvy as a, as, a, as a homeowner might be. A lot of people um, identify LED lights as being um, energy efficient, and I would encourage every vacation homeowner to put as many LED lights in their house for saving energy, but I also want them to consider the the safety side of it. Um, The conventional light bulb is hot, and I have been to fires before where um, people have put their clothing stacked too high in a closet, and the traditional um, light bulb, which is hot, has caught the clothing on fire. I've also been in homes where a lamp is tipped over and the shade is caught on fire with the older, very hot light bulb. And so if you have any light bulbs in your vacation rental that are exposed or in a position where if somebody touched it, um, they'd have to wait for it to cool for a couple minutes after they turn it off, that's an opportunity to change that out. And the bonus, again, being um, look at it from the safety point of view. You're changing up that light bulb and switching to LED to make it safer for the guest, but you're going to save money by using the LED bulb, which is certainly more efficient as well. That's another great, great tip. And uh, I'm storing all these up, Justin, because we're, we're, we're starting all our annual inspections at the moment. Now the snow's gone and we can get out to all our properties and, and we are going to be talking safety. So this is... I, I'll, 
looking forward to using your safety checklist as well. So, so talking about that, can you just give us some, you know, a couple more tips that come off that, uh, that, that checklist? You know, I learned the hard way a number of years ago about um, dryer vents. I had a, a phone call where a guest had called and said that the dryer isn't operating very well. We have to run several cycles through before the, uh, the clothes get dry. And since that time, I've heard that call over and over and over, and I hear people nod their head that they get those phone calls. And come to find out, obviously, there's typically not a problem with the dryer, but uh, what you've got is lint buildup. And so not only are you losing a lot of energy savings by the fact that a guest having to run a dryer through several cycles to get it dry, but looking at the source of what that's happening is, is highlighted probably one of the most important inspections that you do in your rental each year. And I can't emphasize every year. And this is not usually something you can hire someone to do. But make sure, obviously, uh, the dryer lint has been changed from the screen at the dryer itself. Your cleaners should be a part of that safety check as well. But turn that dryer on, go outside of the house, and make sure you're feeling a good flow of air coming through that. Um, I see in a lot of northern homes or houses that haven't been used for a while where mice come in and they'll build a nest in the wintertime inside of the dryer vent. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, that buildup um, certainly can lead to a fire. So uh, dryer vents are a big one. The other one are refrigerators. As part of the annual spring cleaning of the house, don't just pull the refrigerator out because you need to clean underneath it. Make sure you're using the vacuum cleaner to clean the coils. Um, there are fires that have started in refrigerators because they're working so hot. And if you think about a rental, every week when there's a turnover, that door's open for a while while it's being cleaned, and you're taking all of the food out of it. So refrigerators and vacation rentals typically are going to work much harder than your, your residential refrigerator that, that you live with. And as a result... There's that much more heat that's going through the coils in the back, so it's very important to, to focus on that. And probably one of the most important things, again, especially for the northern latitudes, is remembering storm windows. Making sure that if uh, you've closed storm windows in the house for the winter, that when spring comes along, that you're opening those storm windows up and making it as uh, an easy exit point. Think about that. Every time you're in your rental, if there's a fire in the hallway, where are you going to go to get out of the house? Well, it's most likely going to be out of a bedroom window. And granted, it may be two stories or three stories tall. Can the guest at least get out the window um, before before too long or get to somebody who's, you know, if the fire department's going to come along with a ladder, um, are they going to be able to easily get out of those windows? So there's a lot. There's just so many different aspects, and it, it shouldn't be overwhelming once you put into play a mindset that you're responsible for all of these things um, for the renters that are staying in the house. And um, I, I want to caution that people don't get overwhelmed. I, sometimes I've run into some of these safety um, talks with people before, and they've gone, oh, my God, I'm not going to rent my house now. That sounds <laughs> insane. So you're going to give me that checklist so I can, um, I can attach it um, in the show notes? Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. So, so just, just, you know, going back again, we're going to, we're going all the way back to the beginning here and we're talking about who's responsible. So you're, you're saying, you know, the last person to be in the property before the, uh, the guest goes in, um, is, is the person responsible, but on, on the whole, who gets this safety checklist and who, who should be having the overall responsibilities for making sure that the, some of these, you know, annual, monthly, quarterly safety checks are being done? What's important is that the homeowner is, mm -hmm. is uh, directly connected to the safety of the home and recognizes that it's an amenity of his house, his or her house, that their home is safe and it's inspected. And unfortunately for the property manager, and I say the word unfortunate, there are property management companies today that are no longer in business because they have not been a part of safety. So they should have a motivation not from the, the, knack, the uh, act of human decency to make sure someone is just going to be comfortable and safe in their homes, but also from the legal and the liability point of view. I highlight the vacation rental company in Pigeon Forge 
um, that was shuttered two years ago after a fire in their home and uh, two of their guests died. Um, mm. I don't yet know of a vacation world company who had survived the death in one of their homes. So um, there should be a lot of weight on the shoulders of the property management company to educate the homeowner and making sure the homeowner knows about safety and, and wants to do these safety inspections. But ultimately, the property management company's got to come in and watch as well. Okay, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Justin, you've been a, a mine of amazing information. And, um, and thank you so much for, for joining me to talk about this today. So you'll be talking at um, VRM Intel um, event in Breckenridge. Uh, what, what date is that? It's in, in June? It's on June 6th, Wednesday, June 6th. I'll be presenting on safety um, and covering a lot of the same topics that I presented here. And certainly uh, you can expect to see me in the fall out at uh, the VRMA in uh, Las Vegas. Excellent. And um, I, I will look forward to actually meeting you face to face there. Um, thank you, thank you so much. I'll put um, we'll, we'll put the uh, all all the links for any everything we've mentioned today in the show notes. And uh, and if anybody has questions for Justin, please um, include them on the show notes. Go down to the comments section, and I'll let Justin know they're there, and he can come along and answer them for you. So, Justin, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Sounds great. I've enjoyed speaking with you as well, Heather. Yeah, thank you. Wow, that's a lot of food for thought. Thank you so much, Justin Ford from On the Water in Maine and A&A Vacation Rental Consulting. And, uh, you know, if, as Justin said at the outset, there's nobody out there. There's nobody out there doing um, d doing this the way he is, you know, doing t talking to owners and managers about how they can become safer. So, so I feel... Um, you know, very, very fortunate that we've been able to get Justin on the show here. And, and he shared some of these very, very valuable points. Um, and certainly for my own property, I'm going to be taking, um, I, I'm, I'm going to be uh, checking out the, his checklist and, and asking my staff and my owners and cleaners and maintenance people to take note of it. And, and, you know, let's get safer all round. So that's another week done, and I am so pleased that you've, um, you've joined me again. I'm very happy to be back from San Antonio now and to be getting involved, more involved in the vacation rental formula. And, and certainly, you know, safety is, is something that we'll be considering and sort of doing you know, some, some short training courses on safety for the vacation rental formula. And I will probably be um, um, engaging Justin in in um, helping us out in creating some material f um, for our members there. So if you've got any comments, as I said, if you can please um, drop them onto the comments section on the show notes and Jason will come along and answer them. And uh, that's it until next week. It's been an absolute delight being with you and I'll look forward to next time. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.